All right, how are you guys doing? This episode is sponsored by Groove Life. Now, big things are happening in the world right now. As we know, North Korea is now coming out and announcing that they're now moving towards a full war readiness posture. Yes, that's... I, I'm sorry, every time I think of that, I think of them just coming out saying something like that, I think of this. It's every single time. I don't know if you. I don't know. Every single time I think of Kim Jong Un or just North Korea, I think of this. Let me look at the watches. Him taking off his glasses like he's about to be in some some badass movie shoot or something. We also have the United States uh, military notifying Congress that China now has more land based international or excuse me intercontinental range missile launchers in the United States. Man, that is a mouthful. ICBM launchers. Okay, they have more of the United States now. Now, the spy balloon was also shot down, had some payload inside of it that was of a regular commercial jetliner, and it had explosives in inside of it that would actually take it down if need be and implode from the inside out. So one would think, you know, maybe we were, I don't know, jamming it so it couldn't fall through with doing it, or maybe they didn't blow it because they wanted to keep note with this whole weather balloon thing, and they were just hoping it would fall into the sea. We would never find it. Well, we couldn't reverse engineer it, but just to give everybody like a small bit of like facts or some knowledge bombs are about to drop on you, you know, right for this, who thinks that we wouldn't be able to actually recover this thing inside the ocean because, I don't know, I guess we're America. We can do just about anything we want, right? Back in the day, the Russians have actually fired a missile into the ocean, okay? Back when we were having the tissy fit, when we were still having the same kind of deal now, but we went and got it, okay, to go reverse engineer this thing. We actually got it. Not only did, did we do that, that wasn't the whole reason why we were down inside the bottom of the ocean recovering this missile. We used it as a cover story to actually tap into the underwater communication cables that were down inside that same area. So not only to recover it, reverse engineer it, but we tapped into their, their lines of communications. Pretty awesome, right? America is it's pretty powerful and does some something that's really awesome. Most countries pretend like and really wish they could do. And I, I wish at times we would flex our muscles just a tad bit more than what we actually do. Now, this one's actually a bit strange. Okay, now the Russians have handed over to the United States, uh, the embassy inside of Moscow. A note that is demanding that we stop interfering with Russian internal affairs. Hmm. Okay, well, Russia, you probably do the same thing, but it's all good. We'll, do, we'll, play, we'll play for a second. Apparently, it continues to go on and say that the Russians are going to expel. This. They're going to expel all the Americans from the embassy. Okay, okay. Well, well, I'm sure that's really causing some issues. Now, the Russians have also announced that they will be immediately upgrading all the bomb shelters across the country, and Poland has now decided to deploy a Patriot battery to Warsaw. Not really sure why they decided to announce the whole upgrading of the bomb shelters again, because if I'm not mistaken, this was something they actually talked about a few months ago doing. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to push a narrative that their people are to their people that, that something bad is coming and that they need to, to get on the right side of the fence. Now, the Iranians, are, they've already chosen their side. They've also wanted to add a little bit to the news today. Just wanted to hop into that news cycle, of course. Because they now announced that they they have a not so secret underground airbase that goes by the codename of Eagle Forty Four. Hi, all my friends. In Sedoya Oresh, as the Lekuris. Okay, well, that's en that's enough of that. Okay, because none of us, not a single one, well, maybe some of you guys, not I, I can't, I can't understand a thing what they're saying. But you guys get the idea. They somehow figured out how to build a giant tunnel with some ventilation systems that are good enough to have them fly around or drive around jets inside of there. Which is, I mean, imagine with how it smells. I mean, that cannot be good for one to be down inside these tunnels with. It really cannot. It just. I, I don't know. It'd be kind of tough for me to believe you could build a ventilation system that would. I guess you could. I don't know. But they decided to do this instead of upgrading their actual planes. So way to go, Iran. Big things are happening. You probably should want for the Air Force first. But you know what? Build those underground tunnels. Because you know what? The war with Israel is coming soon, I'm sure. God bless. What is going on on planet Earth right now? Can someone please just tell me? I just want you guys to know what the heck is going on with Mother Earth. And yes, my voice is a little bit out right now if you guys are new to the channel. Hey, if you guys are new, do yourself a favor and subscribe. If you guys are over on the Patreon side of the scene, thank you so much to all my VIP members. I do love you guys. Thank you so much. If you guys don't know what that is, you guys can head over there. It's linked in the very top description. It always is. You guys can support the channel. All that money goes to help and pay for the cost of doing this kind of stuff. Pay for my camera guys, my editor, whatever it is. And this is pretty much what we do. We make these videos. I still have not paid myself, by the way, just so everybody's aware, from these videos for the last year. That is a fact. So eat that one, Jack. I don't even remember Jack, but you guys get the point. It's pretty good. So I do appreciate everybody on the Patreon side of things. Link top description. All those videos are ad-free. They're early. And you guys get one exclusive video every single 
week. It's usually going to be a combat reaction video is what it's going to be because I can't post those here on, on YouTube. And guess what? This episode is actually sponsored by Guru Life. This is crazy. I love this. Those old belts are out of style. These are great. I actually have two versions of these. I have the OD green one and I have this black one. And they just happened to send me another one for this video. I was like, great. I already use this stuff. I've been using it for a couple years. This is great. I love it. You guys need to check them out. They'll be linked top of the description. Now, this is the other crazy part. This sends some more stuff along with it. Uh, if you guys are using that same belt in 2023, go ahead and, and knock it out. Get rid of that thing. Grab one of these. You guys have to check them out. They're absolutely amazing. They have this propriety webbing engineering that goes right around the stretchy whole thing right here. You guys see this? You know what I mean? When you bend over and it kind of hurts a little bit and you're like, God bless, I need to loosen a little bit of weight. This will make you feel better about yourself. It's got the world's baddest buckle on it as well. This, this right here. Look at this. My God, look at that. Look at that. It's easy to come undone. My wife has a hard time undoing it though. <laughs> Just kidding, but... Trust me, you guys want to check it. You need to check it out. Your waist will thank you as well. Oh, and last thing on the belt, guess what? They have a 94-year no BS warranty. 94 years. You're, you're, are you really going to be able to outlive this belt? Like, think about it. This is going to be the last belt you ever own, okay? It's amazing. Check it out. I love it. You know what? Not only did it send me a belt, they sent me a ring, which is great, you know, if I don't want to bust open this, but this is one of the coolest products I've ever seen. Look at this. This is one of the wallets. Look at this. I have some of my cards in there. Look at this. They don't come out. Look at that. How cool it is? Watch this. Look at that. You can pop them open. Look at this. They come out, you slide them back in there. Now they're in. I thought this was absolutely insane. This is crazy. And if you want to get real dad and old school, slide this thing on the belt. And now you're, look at this. Oh my gosh. It's actually a pretty cool little money clip. I just had to throw this out there. This thing is awesome. I'm going to be using this thing for sure. All your credit cards, all your cards in there won't get all jacked up. Look at that. You slide it up and now they slide out. God bless. That is awesome. That is really cool. Groove Life, you hit it on the head with this one along with your belt. Thank you so much. So it's time to bring your belt into the 21st century. All you got to do is head over to GrooveLife.com forward slash Rob and save 20% by using promo code Rob on everything Groove Life related. Everything. Grab yourself one of these wallets too. This thing is amazing. I love this thing. I really, I, I can't endorse it enough. That thing's awesome. Grab one of those in a belt. You need to check one of these things out. They're amazing. I've been using them for a couple of years. All you got to do is head over to GrooveLife.com forward slash Rob. Use promo code Rob to save 20% off everything on Groove Life. Everything. That's the best offer you guys are going to find, but you have to use my promo code ROB to save 20% off your entire order. One last time, that is promo code ROB for 20% off your entire order. It'll be linked to the very top description. Thank you so much for Groove Life for keeping my waist feeling nice and, well, not painful over the last couple of years. And thank you for sponsoring this episode. Now, I hope you guys are ready for this next segment. I'm going to tell you guys right now, the Russians have really stepped up their lies with this one. And when they're stepping up their lies, it's kind of crazy because they're now trying to apparently change history as, uh, as a whole. Начнем со Сталинграда. В Сталинград раз в году всегда превращается российский город Волгоград в день, когда празднуется победа в самой главной переломной битве не только Великой Отечественной, но и всей Второй мировой войны. 80 лет назад именно в Сталинграде мы отбили натиск коллективного Запада на нашу страну. Кто только не увязался за немцами, подойдя к Волге, на стороне фашистской Германии была вся Европа. И у гитлеровской армады по Сталинградам было численное преимущество в личном составе, вооружении и технике. Нарвались по полной. Подробности у нас еще впереди, но факт тот, что Сталинград – наш общий опыт, как тех, кто победил, так и тех, кто был бит. Okay, so just we are where this guy right here, who's apparently the equivalent of this dude inside of Russia. I mean, you know what, we will let them attempt to change history just for now and claim that all of Europe was on the side of the Germans, which makes total sense, right? That makes complete sense. И вот именно здесь Путин со всей твердостью заявляет последующим нацизма и тем, кто трусливо снабжает их тяжелым вооружением, что современная война с Россией будет для них совсем другой. И применением бронетехники дело не закончится. До сих пор Россия вела себя еще сдержанно, в расчете на понимание, но все же. Мы свои танки к их границам не посылаем, но у нас есть чем ответить. И применением бронетехники дело не закончится. Тем временем на фронтах спецоперации работают наши военкоры. Now, I mean, come on, Putin. That's, that's, you're claiming right now that you aren't sending tanks to the borders. Like, they're legitimately staging thousands of troops, tens of thousands of troops, that is, of vehicles right now at the border awaiting for the go-ahead. 
And let's go ahead and just turn back the dial just a little bit, shall we? And just for a second, just think about something. The United States sent the USSR under the Lend-Lease Act of World War II. You know what they sent them? 400,000 Jeeps and trucks, 14,000 airplanes, 8,000 tractors, 13,000 tanks, 1.5 million blankets, 15 million pairs of army boots, 105,000 tons of cotton, 2.7 million tons of petrol products, 4.5 million tons of food, 3 thousand allied sailors also lost their lives while trying to run the shipments to the soviets oh and i also ran across a number that said 44 percent of all soviet casualties were actually ukrainian inside of world war ii so not only did they use our equipment to defeat the nazis on their end but they also used a bit of ukrainians it seems themselves so changing history not going to be feasible when we already have the stats in place you can't go ahead you can't turn back time like that 80 years it's like you know what everybody it doesn't even make any sense like who can even like think about that? That does not make any sense whatsoever. Современная Европа напоминает то, как вели себя эти страны в канун Второй мировой. Прячась друг за друга, выпихивали нацистское государство на войну с советской тогда Россией. Когда война таки началась, то на стороне нацистов оказалась вся континентальная Европа и все ее ресурсы от военно-промышленного комплекса до целых армий. Ключевым событием празднования 80-летия Победы в Сталинградской битве стала театральная постановка «Живые и мертвые» по роману Константина Симонова. Фрагмент спектакля по пронзительному роману Константина Симонова «Живые и мертвые» в день Сталинградской Победы смотрели тысячи зрителей. Их вечный поезд под парами и путь бессмертия открыт. Like, how can that be filmed without the entire population? Hey, you know what? Wait a minute. Didn't the Americans help liberate a very large portion of Europe from the Nazis? I'm going to throw that one out there. Who landed inside of France? Who pushed through all the way through to freaking Germany, for God's sakes? Who did that? Yes, the Americans did that. Okay, this whole narrative really doesn't make any sense. And maybe just it gives them a chance for, for, for one time to rewrite history. But you would think the ones who actually know what happened would say, you know what? Wait a minute. This, this doesn't make any sense. This is not true. And this doesn't seem right at all. Okay, so for now, we're actually going to bounce over a little bit of mapping. So out the gate, uh, we haven't really seen any movement from either side on the northern portion of the country. So we're actually just going to stick around a Bakhmut for now because this one is, this one is, is um, it's getting interesting. We're seeing a lot of movement on the Russian side of things through Bakhmut, which is going to be um, a bit of concern for the Ukrainians if they're not already started to exfil from the city days ago or a week ago when we started talking about it. Now, this is where it gets a little bit hairy. So here is Bakhmut City itself. So here it is, just so everybody's aware. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and erase this piece so we can actually move on with a clean map. We're going to scroll north to here. So these blue little dotted lines you guys see, the ones I'm circling, those are the trench systems. So those are the trenching systems that are just north of Krasnohora. So north. Actually, yeah, they're directly north. Okay. The Russians have now been able to push all the way across the main route and now control... I guess you'd say two different sections of this trenching system. On the northern side, they took this the other day, which we spoke about that. So the Russians took that first. Now they've been able to push on the northern side of Kresnohor instead of pushing into the town itself. They said, screw that. Let's go ahead and push all the way across. And now they've taken another section of these trenches. And now they've got a gap right here of Ukrainians who are now kind of, I would say, trapped. But I would assume these Ukrainians have now started to to exit or exfil out of this northwestern side. I would assume so, at least. So they don't get themselves a little bit of issues unless they're pushing themselves and trying to retake this trench line, which would actually be a, kind of a big deal if they did. Because right now, I know this for a fact, the Russians have attacked this town because the Ukrainians have put out that they did defend off uh, an attack by the Russians through here. So we know the Russians have actually made it to this area. And... Just going to throw it out there. There are some claims right now that the Russians have been able to make uh, contact right here on this intersection with the VDV. So the VDV might have made it all the way through there, which means if that is the case, they either skirted around the back side of this trenching system or they've already pushed through. And now they're on the northern side of these cities, which means we're going to see the collapse of this whole pocket here pretty soon, if that is not the case. Now, I will say I have said this multiple times. I would have hoped that the Ukrainians were, were heeding the warnings that were coming and they have started setting up and actually exfilling men out of the city if this was the case. Because right now, they don't really have any real uh, ability to maneuver out of here in a, in a timely fashion. I guess they could possibly take this route right here, this main one that goes out of there. They could have an exfil plan planned right through here, and the, the city will collapse this way. But if they take this main route up here, which is going to be a big issue if they do, it's going to be very difficult to get many men and equipment out of there in a timely manner. 
Now, I, of course, I'm not on the ground. I can only see what, what is being presented to me, but that does seem to be the case. We have on the northwest side of the city itself, Bachman, there hasn't been any movement through here. Now, I'm telling you guys right now, from what I can tell, it seems that it's not just Wagner that are pushing through. It's now going to be like, it's literally hordes of men pushing through this area on the northwestern side. And only by hordes, we're talking about mobilized men that have mediocre training that at least know the lingo of, of mil militaristic lingo or are pushing through this northwest side. On the southern side of the city, the Russians have been able to take another chunk. So they are making a little bit of progress. That is the Russians inside of the city of Bakhmut itself. I'm not saying... Total disaster for the eastern side of the country, but it's not looking good for the city, which I have said I believe it will fall at some point. We just don't know when. The Ukrainians have done a phenomenal job holding off the city for as long as they possibly could, inflicting as much damage on the Russians in this area. And honestly, they've done a phenomenal job. I know I've said this multiple times, and I have to give them as much credit as I possibly can because the stuff they're doing here is amazing. They've done a great job. Now, what comes next? What comes next? What are the Ukrainians going to do next? Are they going to be on their heels for the next couple months until spring comes? They get more tanks. They get more munitions. They get more heavy stuff coming in from the West. Is that what's going to happen? Are they going to be on their heels for a couple a couple months? Or are they going to have a counteroffensive in place in another area that's going to slow them down inside of Bakhmut, pushing over to Seversky and so on and so forth? Is that what's going to happen? That is my question. I don't know. We're all going to have to find out at some point. Now, in the southern side area, or excuse me, the southern side of the front, I'm going to tell you guys right now, there has been some movement around Marinka and on the Volodar region, but no side is like exchanged, I guess you would say, ground. But I will say this, the, the fighting's pretty heavy. I know the Russians actually ran into a, a mined field, a minefield, I guess you would say. It's a field that was full of mines, minefield. And uh, they were kind of stopped in their tracks, no pun intended, but literally stopped in their tracks right there. So that's what's happened down on the southern side of the country. It looks like the Russians are attempting to push through certain areas and are kind of gaining a little bit of traction, but kind of being slowed down in others. So I'm telling you guys, I think the offensive is going to kick off before or on the 24th of February. I do believe so. I believe they're, they're so pinned on, on, on dates. I mean, we're, they're just talking about Stalingrad and World War II, trying to change history. They're trying to set the date and tone for their, this is Putin's history right here. This is what he's got to do. These are the dates. He's got to hit them. He's got time hacks. And I, I was watching another thing earlier I didn't share with you guys, but they were trying to change the goals of, of what they're going to, to try to achieve inside of Ukraine as a whole. And at the beginning, they were trying to denazify. And at the beginning, they were trying to take over Kiev and Kharkiv and all these areas. And what she was going on, this, I mean, the chick we always listen to, she was talking about as the war goes on, the goals can change. So this could be a win now. And this could be the end goal right here. And before it was Kharkiv and Kiev, are they going to go to Poland? And then now they, later on, they start talking about how they're going to get these planes. So uh, apparently if Ukraine gets planes that are sent in here, they're going to have to have an airport, clearly. So they don't have a working airport inside of Ukraine. So what are they going to do? They're going to fly out of out of Poland. So if they're flying out of Poland, what are they going to do from there? Now it's going to give Russia the ability to attack the base inside of Poland. It's just goofy. That That's pretty much where that segment went. It was like I was I was just going in circles. It, I don't know. I, so I didn't even include it. It's pretty much what you guys just heard me say was what happened inside of my brain when I was trying to understand and comprehend what these people were actually saying. It was really strange anyway. I hope you guys did enjoy this. I should see you guys tomorrow with another episode. If not, it'll be over on the Patreon side of things. I do love you. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will catch you guys on another episode. I'm out.